Hello and welcome to another episode of the SciShow Talk Show, the episode of SciShow where we talk to cool people about stuff. Today, we're talking to Lindsay Doe, clinical sexologist and host of Sexplanations, youtube.com slash sexplanations, which you can go watch now or later. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Hank. How's it going? Great. How are you? What are you, what are you up to today? What have you been doing? I just want to know. I want you to tell the story of how you lost your sperm on the way here. Okay. Let's start with that. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to talk with Hank Green today. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about sperm, of course. So I need to go to my office, which is just around the corner, and get my sperm. And um, Which is this. Which is that. Right yeah. here. Yeah. On exactly. a little stick. On a, well, it comes off even more. Oh, okay. So, so you can just have the sperm. Right. I, and I got here, and then I realized that the sperm had fallen off on the journey. So somewhere the on the streets of Missoula, there was a single lonely sperm. Yes. Which I shouldn't be showing you because there should be more dramatic tension for the fact that, like, you did indeed find it. It could have been crushed. Yeah. It could have been lost forever. Or picked up. Yeah. I mean, if I found it, if I saw this on the street, I would totally pick it up. And take it home and Where's your good tell citizenship? all my friends about, well, I figure, you know, it's on the street. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's yeah. lost. Yeah. But you went back and you retraced your steps. I did. I went all the way to my office and then I actually got down on the ground and looked under the door to see if maybe it was there because I left my keys here. And then I came back defeated and there it was on the <laughs> sidewalk. On the I was sidewalk. so excited. <laughs> well... I'm very glad that we have our sperm today. Me so too. are we talking about sperm today? Okay. So I want to know what you think are the purpose is purpose? What is the purpose or purposes of sperm? Human sperm? Uh, it is to convey the genetic information of the man to the female, to the egg, to the genetic information of the female, so that the those gametes can be mixed and turned into a human baby. Okay. That's one great purpose. That's, that's, that's the main the purpose. That's the one we know. To, Are there any be, other? To be clear, that's the reason not only why sperm exists, but also all things. <laughs> all life things. It's just, it's all about, it's all about the sex. It's all about yeah, the sex. Yeah, most of them. Okay. So what? But if, there are more purposes. What is I, another purpose? Do you know one? Uh, no, I pretty much, I feel like that's the whole, the whole purpose. Okay. But there's more, there's yeah. more. What is kind of under debate, though some sperm experts, I think they might call themselves spermatoterologists. Spex spermatoterologists Maybe? is better We're than gonna give experts. Spex <laughs> I don't know if it's better, but it's great. <laughs> They've looked under the microscope and seen that maybe we have what are called kamikaze sperm or killer sperm, fighter sperm. That mm. actually 40% or higher of the sperm, 40% of the sperm that are in an ejaculate mm -hmm. are actually designed to fight off another man's sperm. What? So they're not even trying to... No. <laughs> Something in, just in, happened in the studio. What? What's the word? In, impregnate? Uh, infiltrate. So they're not. They're not Swift. going for the egg. No. They're they're attack they're... sperm. So like, stop, die. Stop. Well, how does that how does that work? They're, and they're describing it as blocking. So they'll use their tails as coils, and they'll set up traps. And we think under the microscope. Oh my goodness, these are the lame, broken ones that have no destiny. Right. But really, what they're doing is they're creating walls, barriers, right, for the other. Sperm. Male sperm to catch. Wow. Yeah. But some of them will actually go and like, Latch. That's terrifying. kill them. I don't know why that's so terrifying. Like, obviously, I'm not going to be personally injured by oh. a sperm. No. But Very... No. But you want to know what's even cooler? <laughs> what? Oh, there's more. There Wait, is more. There's more. But let's say that you suspected that Catherine was not being monogamous. Okay. Your body would produce more fighter sperm. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> so you could actually do a test, not just to see if your wife is faithful, but to see if your husband thinks you're being unfaithful. Maybe. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so you would produce more fighter sperm. Okay. So basically my sperm would become more awesome, but fewer of them would actually have the goal of impregnation. Yes, if you consider an army awesome. Well, I mean, 
Yes. In that, in that very man way that I just did, where I was like, suddenly I have, do they have bazookas? Tell me about their weaponry. They don't necessarily have a captain, which is what I oh. think is the most fascinating part about it, is that somehow this is all orchestrated, if it's happening, because mm -hmm. this is... Still under some debate. Yes, that they don't have you know, a military leader. There's that, no leader. That says, you guys do this. Though, what they have found, a woman's cervix, which is kind of like the tip of the nose or the tip of the tongue. It separates the uterus from the vagina. Mm -hmm. It has a cervical plug in it for most of the month so that bad things don't go in mm -hmm. deeper to her body. Well, during ovulation, the cervical plug transformed to create these channels that work like ladders. And each channel looks very similar to if I were to crack an egg and the egg whites were to come out. Mm -hmm. They're tiny little channels, only a sperm head or two heads wide. And so what will happen is some of the older sperm, the ones that aren't viable to begin with, mm -hmm. will actually make little coil blockades in these channels so that no other mm -hmm. sperm can get up that particular So it's ladder. like, if it's not going to be me, it's not going to be anybody. Yeah. That's hardcore. Well... It's not going to be me. I'm the old king man right. who's going to die, and I'm going to send forth Arthur. Ah. But hasn't Arthur already gotten through then, if it's plugged up? There are multiple channels. And there are multiple Arthurs. There's right. 200 to 500 million so-called Arthurs. I guess more, some, no, because some of them, right, they're the fighter sperm, so they're going right. to be the Lancelots yeah. and the Merlins and... Yeah, all right, so <laughs> there's something that a lot of um, the internet is saying is gross, and I want to hear what, what your thoughts are. It, this is, this is well, okay. maybe here, gross is giving it away. So, so the internet I brought says, something for you. The internet says something is gross, and she wants to know what I think about it. Okay, and let's she's... say I didn't say it was gross. I brought something. <laughs> it's really famous. It's what do you think it is? It's a famous thing. It's famous on the internet. Yeah, it's just famous like on me. the internet. Yeah, just like you. Um, and it's in a jar, and it's a liquid, and it's semi-transparent, <laughs> and it contains some kind of sediment. There's, it's not just liquid, there's something in it. And it's actually got, well, I've, I've got a clue now, because it's got a label from the health food store where we live. Yes, but that's only the jar. Oh, that's, the, that's not so the, the stuff? Jar you didn't buy is... it at the good food store? Mm, no, no, okay. no. Mm -mm. No. Definitely not for sale at a grocery store, <laughs> no. is the, what that face tells me. Um, is it a bodily fluid? Yes. Did it come out of someone I know? I don't know if you know him. <laughs> okay, so it came from a male. It did? That's a, good, that's a good guess. I don't feel like I've ever produced something that looks like this. I'm going to go with you have. Okay. <laughs> and it just hasn't sat in a jar. <laughs> So, I don't want to touch it anymore. It's not gross at all. So is this is this semen? Yes. And why is it liquidy like this? Has Be it been dissolved in some water? Or does this just happen when you let it sit around? Be right, because of physics. Oh, it's physics. So we did an episode on sexplanations about some of my favorite things. And this was one of my favorite things because... I realize that a lot of people probably haven't seen semen because it's ejaculated into their bodies or into a condom or they're not playing with right. a biosex male or, right. ah, I don't want to look at it. So <laughs> a lot of people think that water has been added to it or that it is not normal semen, that somehow right. something weird is going on with mm -hmm. that guy. But um, one of the greatest responses to explain the lack of viscosity is from, his name is, Alchemy Dude 667. Oh, thank you, Alchemy Dude 667. Yeah, thank you. And he's um, he wrote about how the gel state is not the easiest one for it to be in. It's not a stable state. Yes. So it returns to huh. neat to more of a liquid. That is. We have with us today a special guest, the most famous sperm. <laughs> on the internet. I just want to say that, that the information you have brought me today is information I did not know, and so full 10 points. Uh, I'm fascinated. Very cool. Um, 10 points is the maximum you can get. Awesome. I'll take you. them. So now I have a special guest for you. I have Jesse from Animal Wonders who will be bringing 
a Quaker parrot, a monogamous bird. Okay, so this is a Quaker parrot. Quaker parrot. What is his or her name? His name is Chopsticks. Chopsticks. <laughs> That's a cute name. Do you want to say chop chop? Say chop chop. He'll say for a seed. Chop chop. Chop. Good for her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'm not going to do it. Show me the seed. <laughs> I need uh, baiting. I am food, food motivated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I was told that I could not touch Chop Chop because, or Chopsticks, because because uh, he's mean. Yeah. He's very, being very nice to you. That's right. That's because he is bonded to me. Um, you know, so he, I shouldn't even touch you. He, he probably would out. get a little bit upset if you touched me as well. Yeah. 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 You can put your hand closer and you can see what he does. I'm afraid. Oh, he's already opening his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he'll gape at you and he'll lunge and then he'll laugh maniacally. <laughs> <laughs> you, think so? you think it's funny? Wait, so is his connection to you part of the monogamy thing? Does he think yes. you're his soulmate? He does. He thinks I'm his soulmate. Really? How does he feel about Augusto? Oh, he hates him. Okay. He hates well, him. Well, that's because you're cheating on him. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh. Do you produce more sperm because she has a husband? <laughs> <laughs> He thinks that's more funny. Think it's sperm. funny. <laughs> I don't think they would produce more sperm because they're going to be monogamous in the wild and they have cloacas and they don't have, you know, things going inside the female. Yeah, can you just explain rub. cloacas to me? In a hole. In a right. hole. And they There's both just... male and female birds have them. Yes. And the Dang. urea comes out of them. Everything comes out of one hole and they just rub mm -hmm. them and the sperm gets in there and that's how eggs are made. So is this a South American bird? They live in, in the tropical areas of South America. Um, but these guys are interesting because people, there's so many people, these guys were a huge influx of pet in the pet trade in the 1970s and they became an invasive species. They can tolerate cold weather. So there are quite a few places in the world that these guys have set up a, a sustainable colony. Mm -hmm. New York is one of them. Mm. Um, it's interesting. They're, they tried to eradicate them because of these huge nests, usually in telephone, Mm -hmm. uh, on telephone wires and poles, and I mean, if you if you Google it, um, <laughs> you can see just these massive structures of twigs, and it would weigh down, and it would um, cause damage to the, the electrical components. Um, so they tried to eradicate them, and uh, in New York, they were working. They had these huge programs to try and get rid of these guys, and uh, then they started doing studies on their feces compared to pigeon feces and they realized the pigeon feces is more corrosive than the Quaker parrot feces. Mm. So they actually said, well, we, we don't mind the Quaker parrots quite as much as the pigeons. So we'll <laughs> let them better. hang out. Yeah. So, let's see if you can completely outcompete pigeons. <laughs> no more pigeons. pigeons in New York City. Watch this. Ready? Achoo! Achoo! Oh, yeah. I like you. <laughs> And you think at it's all <laughs> I want to know what your sperm looks like. <laughs> it would tell us so much. Okay, tell me, tell me all that. <laughs> Chopsticks, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for coming on the show today. Oh my goodness, what did your neck just do? And Jesse, thank you, and Lindsay, of course, uh, for bringing in both a, a model of a sperm and also actual the degraded ejaculate. So <laughs> I don't know what we would do without you. And to you, thank you for watching this episode of SciShow Talk Show. If you want to keep getting smarter with us here at SciShow, you can go to youtube.com slash SciShow and subscribe. <laughs>